will equal the long-standing win record in Europe at 9-0. First two bands, Kennan taken away from Freddy, Lissandra taken away from Huni. Power picks. Look at Fnatic here, yeah, yeah. Fnatic really looking towards that top lane, and Freddy, Kennan and Noah being banned away. Lissandra from SK, I like the one. I feel Fnatic is too good at playing Lissandra, and it fits their playstyle so well. There's the ring guy we always talk about with Rainover and his fantastic ability to create picks on the map at all times. He's the best uh, ring up player in the West. Well, heavy, heavy favorites on these target bands. You're touching on that Rengar. Five games played by Rainover. He's got himself 29 kills and 43 assists over the course of Fnatic's game. So, very, very targeted band. Kassadin taken off the table from Fox. Again, these are just heavy, heavy priority picks. Ari still available, LeBlanc still available, Zerat still available yeah. for these mid laners if they want to go that route. A lot of options for the mid laners. I feel like what Fnatic has done here is because Azir has been nerfed on 5.3, the target towards Freddy, trying to either push him on that champion or maybe a complete different champion we haven't seen him play so far in their top lane. Zed first picked. We've seen it before from Fnatic and honestly, I don't think it's needed. There are so many other options for you to take you just lost your Annie pick here, and obviously, uh, Forgiven gets his best champion. So, we touch on that Zed very quickly. Two games played in the past, 10-3-15. I distinctly remember watching Febivan play Assassins and not necessarily having the best targeting. We'll see what he can do this game. With the Leona ban and taking away Yellow Star's heavy engage, yeah. he may favor the likes of a Janna. That's why SK Gaming banned Leona, because when Yellow Star is not playing as support he can roam on and engage on like any or Leona, which has been his two main picks. He falls back on Janna. And he's a lot more passive in the early game when playing the champion. He's not the guy starting the team fights either. That's why they ban it and say, okay, whatever you want to first pick, if you don't take the Annie, we're gonna get it in the very first rotation, pushing Yellow Star on something else. It should probably be the Janna for him when it comes to his pick. Well, I will see how well Enrated performs on this Annie. I don't particularly think is his strongest champion. However, SK Gaming will most definitely have been preparing for this matchup, and we'll see how Enrater can handle himself. On the other side, it is Rek'Sai and Corky locked in. Steelback is going to have his traditional champion. Krepo called it the janitor position, and Steelback likes to clean up from the back line. Very true, and another AD carry for him who can farm one versus two in a lane and allow Yellowstar for roam if he has, if he has a support who can do it. The performance between him and Yellowstar in the 2 and 2 lane against Copenhagen Wolves were not very good, however. So if SK Gaming can manage to, fall, to force standard lanes, they actually have the exact same setup the Wolves used to beat Fnatic in that dual lane. Well, we'll see if SK Gaming can make that work. They do have their power picks for both Sven and Fox, Ari and Jarvan. Jarvan, the fourth for Sven Skeren, has a 90% kill participation when Sven is wielding the Prince of Demacia. So against a team like Fnatic, who have such heavy emphasis on pick, that could be a great way to disrupt Fnatic's standard playstyle. And again, that's the thing when you first pick a Zed, you don't really take anything away from SK because they have so many different mid lane picks that more or less performs the same role for them. And then now again, you get Jarvan for Svensker and you get Grace for Forgiven. This is comfort power picks all around. The only new pick we haven't seen before is Annie for, in, for in ready. We haven't seen him play the engage support. Well, once before, he once was before, one, sorry. four, and six. That's true, 40%, yeah. yeah right. 40% kill participation. If memory serves correctly, it was Fox that helped carry that game because both Forgiven and Rated were ganked very heavily in the early stages. But we'll see how, how he works out. We've been calling Rated a little bit one-dimensional. Fnatic, traditional, rumble up top, and Yellowstar pulling out a new champion in the spring split. First time Thresh this year. Yeah, and that's actually a champion where he can roam around early on and create some place. But look at Fnatic's comp here. That's not what they normally like to run. You have often Sivir, Rengar, Lissandra, types of heavy engage coming in. This game here, there's no real hard engage on the side of Fnatic. You gotta land a hook or maybe Rainover coming in, knocking up a target. That's the only way for Fnatic to start. So this is very different. While it might be somewhat of the same champions, the combination we haven't seen before, and actually means Fnatic has to find some of, some of, somewhat of a new playstyle. Normally, they're the ones catching out the other targets. In this game here, SK Gaming have a lot more engage on their hand. And SK are going for that early power spike with the Renekton locked in to round out that laning and mid-game strength. Freddy 
is one of the most famous Renekton players here in Europe. And interestingly, the last time Fnatic and SK played in the summer split last year, Freddy was also playing Renekton in that matchup. All time history in the LCS, Fnatic have 11 wins to SK Gaming's nine. SK looking to start off the new year and a new version of El Clasico with this team comp. Yeah, and SK really looking to force standard lanes here. Then they have winning matchups in the two side lanes for themselves. So we can see them go in early on, place a few deep boards. But I really like how they've actually managed to push Fnatic away from every, pretty much any kind of hard engage. Lissandra being banned and obviously Rengar and Leona. Like this, all the engaged champions by taking the Annie then away from Yellowstar. Fnatic here, this is the first time we have to see them actually react to what the other team is doing on the map and not looking for to engage themselves. And I'm not sure they can pull it off because we've only seen that one playstyle. We really, really have. The one thing that does work in Fnatic's favor, these champions can also work in that pick composition or that pick style. Something that's interesting to note, the difference between these teams. Fnatic have got the highest kills and assists in the league, whereas SK have got some of the lowest deaths. There's your team comps, guys. You can see Fnatic, first time Thresh for Yellowstar this year. And of course, Renekton, first time for Freddy. Hashtag FMC win, hashtag SK win. Despite there being no Spaniards on either side, it is Fnatic versus SK, 8 and 0. Fnatic's flag is lit. Is it going to be enough to take down the leaders of the European LCS? Jump on Twitter and vote, guys. Let us know. And this really is a match between two teams who actually managed to to rebuild their brand, but we can talk more about that later. So one thing I do want to quote very quickly is Yellowstar. He shared his thoughts on Fnatic's seemingly passive playstyle. Well, uh, we don't have a lot of time to practice. We only started on the 6th of January, so it just gave us like two weeks before the LCS. So we ha basically have to find a style, a way to play, and it's the one we found uh, the best for us, to fit us the best. So give us some more time and we'll sh show like a lot of strategies, and you can count on us to perform. Big words. Five weeks in, I think they've been given all the time they need. They're coming up against their toughest opposition yet. And Yellow Star said, give us time, we will perform. Today's the day. Today's the day indeed. If you can beat SK Gaming, suddenly you will have all the confidence in the world, in your players, in your play style. They have just been so good in this year's LCS. And look what they're doing here. Forgiven and Enraged. They're not showing themselves anywhere. They already placed the ward to see if Fnatic was invading in to try and deep ward. And they're just waiting in this bush where you would never normally ward. Meaning they're setting up for that 2-2 two two lane. Fnatic swapping up. They have no clue where SK is sending their lanes. And they're actually going to be in for a nasty surprise when they see Forgiven and Enraged on this top side. So nice little... Uh, play here by SK. And interesting to see that neither team went for that deep vision. SK just using their understanding of their opponents to gain a small advantage. Take a look at this. Jungle camp started all around. Krugs for the duo of SK. You can see Renekton soloing the Wolves and Huni yeah. with the help of Yellowstar on the Grom. Fnatic, early on in this lane, they're going to have to just place extremely passive. Krugs going over to SK. They need to just go into lane. Let's see how many minions they actually miss up there because if you miss like just one melee minion, which I'm not sure if Forgiven got that XP or not, but if you miss one melee minion, you will still level up to level two when you kill the last of the ranged creeps. This case here, I do feel, I do think, SK actually lost two minions, so they have to wait for the next wave, the one melee minion, before they level up. Take a look at Enrated's positioning, definitely using that zoning that Annie can provide on the front line. Teleports from both of the respective top laners to put them now in the bottom lane. And there's that level two you touched on, Deficio, and rated, making sure that Steelback and Yellowstar are falling back. This is how the Wolves started off their eventual win yeah. against Fnatic last week. SK have got the same playbook that they're reading from, and they've got the matchup they wanted. And this is somewhat Fnatic sacrificing their dual lane, as we have seen before, because they give that Grump over to Huni, so he gets instant level two, and then he teleports down to the bottom lane. But that's not an advantage if it's standard lanes, because you can see how Freddy, he was just in the lane from the start, pushing it in, while Huni was still doing that Grump. So Fnatic has lost out on this level one, and SK getting these standard lanes of this. Again, also why to pick that Renekton also to have a very, very strong front line later in the game between Java and Renekton going full tank. After maybe, could see a Tiamat coming in, but then he goes full tank after. And a Corky 
will have zero damage on him. This actually means that SK Gaming's late game will be stronger than Fnatic's because they have that strong dual lane or front line. Well, we'll see how that works out. Fox is going to get run down by Rainover. The Burrow, the tunnel. Rainover instantly eats the charm. Fox forced to flash, so Rainover's presence instantly burning the summoner spell on that Ari, and now he's setting his sights on this very, very aggressive yeah. Renekton in the bottom lane. So they saw him on the bottom side after the gang in mid lane. Freddy should be aware there's a high chance he's going to get ganked here. Let's see if he can actually escape. He shouldn't be able to. Uh, he slices, he dices, he's knocked up. hooney has got the flame spitter out. Rainover gets the red buff. He gets the first blood. Greedy, greedy play by Freddy. He hadn't placed his ward yet. Still sitting ready here for his trinket. And after Rainover ganked the bottom lane, he ends up on the bottom side of the map. You should expect him to be there. He was just pushing Freddy on his own, even slice and dice. At least he used it very early, and he was just too far up the lane. Ends up dying here, no warp being placed by him, and not expecting or respecting, we can say instead, rain over coming down. So good start for Fnatic, despite the fact that SK had the winning lanes in the duo and top. Freddy's picked himself up that second Doran's blade, a second Doran's ring picked up for Fox. SK even signaling in their itemization that they're looking for those power spikes in this stage of the game. Unfortunately, a small misplay from Freddy. Overconfidence or bravado, whatever you want to say, gives up that CS. But look at the difference between Steelback and Forgiven already. 14 to 36. Forgiven has actually got an average CS per minute of 10.06, the highest in the EU LCS by a full creep score, which is mind-boggling considering the different styles and just how good this guy is at finding his farm. Yeah, and again, they just get a free lane because Fnatic doesn't do a camp at level one and just walk in the lane saying, oh, if you guys are here, well, we're going to sit back because we know you're, you're going to get the level two. And of course, Graves Annie is a really, really strong lane into this Kogi Thresh. So everything is just in favor of SK in terms of the dual lanes. And obviously, Freddy, despite dying, he didn't actually blow his flash. He saved it. That's why he can go straight back to this lane and keep playing aggressive. Because remember Renekton after the changes. He needs to trade trade with champions to really build up Fury. Otherwise, it takes a long time for him just on the minions. So you get rewarded for playing aggressive. And that's what Freddy wants to do. Well, happy you mentioned that. We are playing on 5.3. We've already seen the two previous games. Uh, some changes in the trinket upgrades, actually. With that greater stealth totem now being picked up relatively early on from top laners in particular. This is something that's official. We were talking about that SK could use a team that traditionally yeah. places less wards in their opponents. Having that trinket will play into their favor. Freddy should just keep his uh, totem trinket here upgraded after level 9 as well for the 250 goal, I believe. But it's very, very cheap to get two wards, a discount side stone. And then suddenly, yeah, you have some extra vision from SK. But it's very fun to see them as a team, how they the pick and ban phase always go. They pick extremely strong, like one on one champions. Graves is probably the best AD carry in terms of a, of a one on one, until maybe a Vayne will outscale him. But let's just see what happens here first. Svenskern trying to clear a ward, fighting with Rainover. Gonna get knocked up in oh, the air, replies in the knock up. Fox does not manage to flash as Rainover gets away. TP coming down. There's the death mark. Instant flash away from Svenskern. The equalizer is all right. It's slowing Febivin down. Febivin carries on chasing. Fox is not gonna get away. Huni flashes forward for that one. Now he's turned his attention to Enraged. It's two kills for Fnatic. The teleport from Huni working out. And Fnatic coming out ahead, thanks to Rainover. Yeah, and Fnatic here and their mentality is always, we need to work as a team. So despite the wave pushing in the bottom side, Huni didn't hesitate, just teleported up there, joined the fight in. Febriven and Rainover, though, was the guy to set it up. After it was actually SK starting the fight itself, Charm missed, Rainover stayed alive. Two kills now for this Zed, first pick by Febriven. And I think, the re let's just see the replay again, actually, first. Notice how the teleport is coming in. Huni is standing at his own tower. He's going to lose a lot of farm on it, but if he gets his team ahead, it is worth it. Kill on to Svenskern first. Obviously, ulti on the Ari. Last kill coming in. Yeah, so Febivin manages to run down Fox. Great play on this Zed. We were a tad nervous on how Febivin would perform, but at 2-0, and and even CS, he's doing well. So I think the reason for Fnatic first picking Zed is because SK Gaming's play style is 1-3-1 all game long, where they pick against these champions who are very good in one-on-ones and two-and-twos, so they can apply pressure on every single lane, take down these outer turrets, and force you to sit back and defend, and that's how they get information. Instead of buying wards, they can just see you farming under your own turret, and you won't be able to kill them one-on-one, -on -one, but the Zed can. That's why Febren first picks it, 
and he's off to a perfect start. If you shut down that 1 3 run from SK, you force them to group up as a team, and that's where they get punched for having no wards on the map. And suddenly you can play around that, catch them out of position, and win the fights like Elements tried to do two weeks ago. Now, Rainover, he's onto Freddy. Oh, Freddy's in so much trouble, throws down the Dominus, equalizes up. Freddy's forced to slice and dice, it's not gonna work. Rainover is showing up four kills, and he's been involved in every single one before the 10 minute mark punishing every single overstep from SK Gaming. Yeah, and really using the tunnel so well. Notice how there's a ward in the small bush down in the bottom and just where Hoon is recalling. He knew that, so he moved in the jungle of SK, moved around the ward and just tunneled over the wall. Surprised Freddy. Two kills now for Fnatic in the bottom lane and two kills in the mid lane. Off to a great, great start. Well, this is something that we touched on earlier, is how many kills Fnatic has. And Fox is actually looking for another one not going to be able to. That was a lot of damage. Wow, it's forbidden and goes in. It's just a zoning ultimate. <laughs> going to force Fox back. As we're touching that again, Fnatic as a team, 177 kills in their eight games. That is a lot. SK4 Contrast, only 127 kills. Fnatic off to another great start, but it hasn't resulted in objectives yet. No, and then again, with the kills here you talk about, SK Gaming don't care about kills. They want to get towers, they want to get global gold. That's all they play for. When they split push in that 1-3-1, they don't try and duel you one-on-one. -on -one. No, they just keep pushing you down, then they roam to other lanes, and that's where they set up the plays with a numbers advantage. Fnatic though, because they're winning the laning phase, the first time we see SK lose early on, and now even more onto Forgiven. Yellow Star with the flash play, and Rated and Forgiven instantly in retreat, and Rated still got his flash available. They do manage to burn Forgiven's flash, but Another aggressive play, and the synergy yeah. between Rainover and Yellowstar was great. And again, the first time we really see SK lose early on. On average, they're 1,300 goal ahead of the other team at 10 minutes. On average, in the EULCS, this game is the other way around for Fnatic. This might mean SK can go to the split pushing style, and that could be the thing Fnatic was aiming for, especially with Rainover being so aggressive on this Rek'Sai here. So let's see who's going to get this first dragon, SK. I'm going to be under a little bit of pressure. The farm alarm from Rainover. Is he going to get in range? That's the question. Prey Seeker available. He's going to tunnel in. Here comes the rest of Fnatic. Defensive Spirit Rush. Equalizer has already been used by Huni, so nothing further comes of it. Forgiven. No flash available. He dashes forwards. Steelback gets the shield up. And Red is coming is in. Up. We do see collateral and Buckshot is going to be available. Summoner kill comes up. That's a double stun. And Rage, it's got them. Forgiven kills Cap them. Boom. Two kills. SK are on the board. Such a nice turnaround. Forgiven, he was buying time. Notice how he didn't back away. He stayed in. He kept trading with Steelback. And then Rage jumps in. Flash done with the W and just blowing notes. Look again here. Notice how Forgiven, he's not trying to run away. He keeps trading. Flash, stun from N-Rated into ulti and buckshot from Forgiven. That's two kills. That was by far an outplay on behalf of SK. With the tower secured, they've evened up the gold difference. Forgiven, 40 CS ahead of his opposite number. The F-Sword and Pickaxe, but here comes rain over the rest of Fnatic. This guy's everywhere. Our surrounding is N-Rated. Get Mooney. away, knock-up's not gonna work. Forgiven and N-Rated are in trouble. Three members of Fnatic are in place. Two easy kills, and Fnatic instantly punish SK's overstep. And again, you use that teleport here to assist your team every single time. You don't care about your own laning phase. Two kills, two assists for Huni because of it. And honestly, again, Fnatic here. We just have to go back to the fight in the, uh, between the dual lanes. The only lane where Fnatic doesn't have to make any plays is for Steelback and Yellowstar, and yet they took the fight to SK Gaming, got punished for it. Every other lane is doing just fine. Just have Steelback farming. Don't try and fight against Forgiven and N-Rated at this point. Despite the fact that SK are four kills down, they are 200 gold behind, they have two towers in the lead, and they have a dragon to their name. League of Legends is a game of objectives, and SK are still playing around the objectives. Always. And they've got massive CS advantages in their top and AD carry roles. They always play really, really aggressive in the lane. They play greedy. That's why they have been punished. Freddy dying twice to gain from Rainover. But that's the style SK plays. Always push your lane, always chip away on that turret. After enough time, you will take it down and you cannot afford to lose your auto turrets against SK. Because remember, remember what I said before? SK's way of getting information and vision is by pushing up every single lane at once and the further down they can push them into your base or towards your base, the more information they get, the shorter route they have to roam from the, two, from the lanes to really dive or catch you off guard. 
And that's why you cannot lose these autotoads so early. Despite SK being behind in kills, they can actually be too unhappy with this uh, early game. Well, take a look at your junglers. Both of them going for those skirmishes sabers. Senskaren and just swapping a moment ago. Huni's the first one to upgrade to their greater stealth totem, rather. Gonna make use of that vision as best as he can. And SK starting to move around the map. Look at the vision in the tunnels. Zanova, his network has slowly diminished. Now that SK are moving around just a tad more, and it looks like the lanes have normalized. Top laners both in their respective regular locales. I also see the arm guards here on Ari. That's very normal if you fall behind to a Z in lane. You need to get that armor, get a fairly early outlast. It also means once QSS is picked up for Forgiven, suddenly there's not a real target for Febben to, to ulti. We're going to get Freddy and Svenska in full tank from their side. And obviously, yeah, okay, you can ulti the, the Annie, but she's going to get her tables down in time because you're not going to stun her first with the Z. So not really going to be a target late game for Forbidden. And that's again also why Fnatic want to create some plays here in this mid game. So Fnatic have tried to push down this middle tower. Committed at least a minute and a half, two minutes in recent moments. But SK have defended well. we'll take a look at this top lane. Huni 202. Still down 30 CS to Freddy. But obviously the kills and the assists are going to keep him relevant. Got that haunting guys and very close to level 11. Yeah, and because Freddy also is going full tank, Huni's not going to have a problem laning against him anymore. Arm guards for him early on as well. He gets the magic penetration. This is going to be a free lane for Huni to actually push in over and over. And Freddy now, from basically 15 minutes on, he's just going to be a tank. Nothing else. He's not really going to be able to apply any pressure on this Renekton for himself. Well, there's going to be pressure from Rainover in this top lane. And Rated and Sven are nearby. It looks like a dive is about to come out. Freddy is trying to bait it. Rainover flashes in. Dominus comes out. Sven's scare and Cataclysm. Where is it? He's going to get it down under the tower, but Freddy is going to get dropped. Equalizer comes out from Huni once again. Not the greatest. And Rated stuns Huni up under the, the tower, kill. but he gets himself too. Rainover re-engages with the rest of Fnatic behind him. That's a triple kill. The honey pot is delicious, and Fnatic take their first tower. Really, SK game he is walking one by one. Svensson was there first for the counter gank, but he couldn't really cataclysm because Freddy would be stuck in it as well. He delayed it, ends up seeing his top laner go down, and the rest just walking in as well. Fnatic here getting so many kills early on, and two turrets as well. Let's see what the trade is. We see Fox in the middle lane. Forgiven was pushing out bottom, but he's not going to commit to that inner turret. So, see what the HP is. Fox trades one tower for two. And here's this re-engage. Yeah, so notice here again, Freddy actually want to set it up by stunning Huni, and then Svensson comes in. As soon as he spots Reyna, he has to back away. Notice how Svensson delays the Cataclysm. He cannot use it and catch Freddy as well. And therefore, as well, it doesn't really do anything. He ends up going down to Huni, and Reyna is stuck here as well. Everyone's trying to help Freddy out, but Fnatic are here. Numbers advantage. Remember, Fnatic always play as a team. They hunt together, and they punish SK right here. They do, and Yellow Star in today's game, showing us that the playstyle they developed is the one they are committing to. This is the same Fnatic that we've seen for the last four weeks, but it's working. It's got them two towers, it's got them a strong kill advantage and a small gold lead. But I do want to ask you guys to cast your minds back to last year. SK Gaming traditionally lost the early game and won the mid to late. They still have three of those five players, we'll see if they can do that again. They have to if they want to beat Fnatic today. Yeah, but again, even though three of the players are the same, that was a very, very different SK Gaming. We can talk about that after this Dragon. Fnatic is setting up for it. Not really too many wards to deny vision. There's the first pink ward actually coming down. So they have taken control of this Dragon, except for that skull crap. So SK can see what's happening, but walking head first into a a rumble ulti is not a good idea. That's a massive cataclysm, but Sven Skirin is destroyed in the pit. Now SK Gaming look to be in retreat. Freddy's got Dominus ticking. He's found rain over the rest of Fnatic, staying as a group, hunting as a group. They've turned their attention to Fox, but Forgiven. Fox takes him down. Look for Forgiven in the back line, untouched. Huni's going to get dropped. Forgiven's on the board again. Yellow Star dropped by Forgiven for the double kill. SK lose Dragon and Sven, but find three in reply. Yeah, three kills for them. Notice how SK went in and actually just waited for all the ultis from Fnatic to be blown. And once they were gone, they re-engaged, got the kills to one Huni. Not looking happy after that fight. Yeah, Huni really, really disappointed. Throws his hand into his palm. Here's the fight official. So notice here, Svenskan goes in first of N rated. Now they want to pop all the ultis from Fnatic. Febren used it, Rumble to down. SK, they're waiting, they're buying time. Rumble is gone, Hourglass missed 
plagued by Huni. Now they can re-engage for Given. Gets hooked, but he's still left untouched at this point here. And just start cleaning up the fights with Freddy, the strong frontline tank. That was just well played after actually sacrificing your jungler. You just wait for all these ulti to be used and obviously a misplay from Huni with the hourglass. Then you re-engage after. And if Fnatic are not able to contain Forgiven with 180 CS, the highest on the map by far, Infinity Edge and Shiv getting closer, that is the makings of a very, very scary Graves. Maybe Shiv, maybe Ghostblade, we'll see what he decides. BF Sword picked up immediately thanks to those kills. And again, I'm just going to say, we touched on it before Dragon Deficio, SK, they dug deep last year. They won through strong team fights around objectives. I don't know, man. They just showed they can do it today. They're still only a couple of thousand gold down thanks to Fiverr dropping the fourth tower of the game. Again, we have to remember for Fnatic, the two soul laners, the Rumble and the Zed, is very reliant on being able to win the fight through their ulties. Once Zed uses Death Mark, it's very hard for him to add anything else, like really get back in the fight, you know, re-engage and pop a target. Same goes for Huni on this Rumble, so it's going to be so much about the start of the fight for Fnatic. And for SK, it's more about kite around a little bit, maybe sacrifice Svensk on a Freddy, wait for all the ultis like we saw that Dragon. Then suddenly you look for that re-engage, your AD carry is left untouched in the backline. There's only a Z to dive him. And as soon as he gets to QSS, that's it. Well, even Zion Spartan praising Huni is a monster. His equalizers have been... Half good, I'm going to say, this game. However, he's doing great. I think it's time for SK's first loss. Bit of a Fnatic fan there from Atis is Lara. I do want to touch on 20 minutes into the game. Fnatic have earned themselves a 2,000 gold lead. 10 kills to 5, 4 towers to 3. They're even on Dragons. So, they're in there. The, the two differences here. Freddy's farm is fantastic, as is Forgivens. But Fnatic have got kills on the board to help even out those differences. And around the objectives, SK have already shown that they can engage at the right time. And that's kind of a fun thing because normally at this time of the game, we're going to see SK again the 1 3 1. And every single lane is going to be pushed all the way down to the tier 2 turrets. Then they start roaming in between them and just pick up a few more kills, get every single dragon, and the game is over. But because Fnatic played so well early on, that has not been the case. And we've actually seen SK fall back to team fighting to be the way of winning. Now this Baron here, that's very interesting. Look at all the wards from Fnatic. They can see everything SK can do. If they move in to try and stop this one, Fnatic can just back away in time. They're not moving, they're recalling from in raided, Freddy in the bottom, and that's gonna be a Baron for Fnatic. Just a nice setup, 21 minutes in. Taking advantage of the fact that SK are not the strongest warding teams and the defensive. Fnatic with a strong advantage. Exactly. Punishing SK for the lack of wards, no upgraded stealth totems yet for them, and using this Z to create the pressure in the top lane first, pushing it all the way in. So the Ari had to sit back and defend the wave while you then had all the D wards placed so you could see every single member from SK resulting in a very easy Baron for Fnatic. 20, nice 20 minutes Baron for Fnatic. Let's see what they can do with it. Let's see how many waves they can push in or towers they can apply pressure to. Yellow Star, no flash available, but it will be soon. And Rated and Svenskeren trying to get away. Reynov is flashed in for the knockup. Svenskeren is caught by the death sentence and he will die. Tevis comes up, but it's not enough. That's a double kill for Steelback as he finds a support in a jungle and Fnatic with empowered Baron minions. They're looking for more. First time we see SK Gaming getting pressured this much and they look lost, honestly. And Rated and Svenskeren being caught out of position completely by Fnatic. Not even telling them you have to like go in a 1-4 split push if you want to get a turret. No, you just get two free picks. This mid lane turret as well should go down. They might even look for more. Collateral damage just for wave clear from Forgiven. It's not going to be enough. Those minions still hammering away on the inner turret. Fnatic secure their fifth tower of the game and earn themselves a 6,000 gold lead. Spring split last year. SK Gaming actually beat Fnatic in the regular season but lost in the Springs for playoffs. Historically, these teams have such a long history, despite players being different. The Fnatic are showing SK they can still beat them. Yeah, the team history is there, but it doesn't matter anything with all these new players on both the teams, because SK is completely different compared to last year, where it was all about teamwork, you know, rotating together as a unit. Jesses would play these farm heavy champions, long range poke. That's how SK Gaming would win, by like out rotating you as a unit. Now it's more about individual play from them, being able to constantly apply pressure in every single lane and winning these one-on-one, two-on-two fights. 
for them. They have so good players now in terms of just the mechanics. Where Fnatic is all about the team play, always running together. It has actually been a problem for them in the past because they they're not very good at using the side lanes to their advantage, and they don't split push. They always run together. So if they have if the side lanes are pushing down towards Fnatic themselves, suddenly they are stuck like five men in the mid lane and not really able to push anything. And that has been a problem. Let's see if they've fixed it. So Fnatic secure the second dragon. SK decide not to contest this one. They were thinking about it. They were moving down towards the pit. But I do just want to touch on this, this difference in jungle pressure. Spence coming into the game on that job, and I touched on it. He had a 90% kill participation in all of his previous games. On his stats, I said four games played, 42 assists. And actually, Rain over Rek'Sai left somewhat to be desired. He had 57% kill participation in his games. This time, 10 out of 12 kills. Rek'Sai punished every single SK lane that was overextended. And again, the front man for Fnatic is Rainover at the early stage of the game. Yeah, and honestly, looking at the early game, that should never, should never have happened for SK because you had the winning dual lane on the top side, so Svensson could actually technically say, I'm just going to be on the bottom side of the map, making sure Freddy can pull his lane and he doesn't get ganked by Rainover. Or he could turn around and say, I'm just going to put all my focus on the top side of the map. Freddy, you play safe. You don't push your advantage. Sit back and farm, and we make sure we win the top lane really, really hard. We might even go for dive onto Fnatic because they'll push so far down. Instead, no wards or place really to try and spot Rainover. He was just moving between the lanes like he wanted to. And no response from Svenskan either on the Javan because he didn't pick a lane to focus on. They didn't use the strong dual lane winning for anything. And it's actually a thing we saw Copenhagen Wolves do against Fnatic where Freeze and Unlimited were winning against Steelback and, and Yellowstar. And they just ignored that lane. Said, you're going to do fine on 2-2. Two two. Airwax went down to Youngbuck, camped that lane over and over, got a massive lead for him as well over Huni. SK just did nothing with that information they had and with the edge they had in some of the lanes. And that really, really punished them because Reynolds would just do whatever he wanted to. So Baron Buff has timed out as we approach 26 minutes. Fnatic are continuing to keep the pressure on SK Gaming. Deep wards are in. Red buff stolen away a moment ago. Fnatic signaling that they control the map, and SK have to blindly face check if they want to go anywhere. Still no upgraded trinkets for SK. Still no blue trinkets for SK. So lacking vision, or lacking the ability to control their own jungle. Yeah, three members as well, sitting on six items. Not been selling any of the Dorns items, which means there's actually no room for anything for them and Fnatic staying together, pushing in the waves. Top lane is not pushing for them though, so they have to rely on landing like a hook and poke SK away, because the top lane is pushing for SK, the mid lane is dead even. So not really any pressure elsewhere, and that's often the problem for Fnatic when they sit 5 here. They're relying now on Yellowstar to create a pick for them. And they need to be very careful with that equalizer. We've seen equalizers used to clear towers in team compositions, but for Fnatic, if it's not a game-changing or team-fight winning equalizer, SK can just re-engage afterwards. The siege continues. Fnatic stick up. Keep your eyes on Yellowstar or Rainover. We've seen Flash up another one. Fort Fox. Do Fnatic want it? Equalizer is out, but Yellowstar didn't engage. Huni opted not to go in on that one. A little bit of a miscommunication, but another one on turn raided. Again. Still no follow-up. Remember that shield SK keeps getting on the turret here, making it even harder when you're not running like a siege comp itself. Like Zed offers nothing right here. You can't hit the turret at any time. So it's all about Yellowstar. You have to wonder if there's a communication language barrier there between Huni and Yellowstar. Death Sentence for this time around does not connect. And with no equalizer, all of that presence and all of that control in the tower has lost. So Fnatic back away. SK defend the tower. It is in full HP and something that we have to mention. This is the first time that SK's fallen behind at 20 minutes and beyond in gold. They are currently 7,000 gold down. And for the first time in 2015, SK Gaming need to show the viewers and their fans what they can do when they're under pressure. So far, they have managed to defend because again, Fnatic just took the five on five and couldn't really do anything with the comp. I think they're gonna adjust it now. I mean, you have to realize, okay, we're not getting anywhere with this. Let's try and use our Z to split push. Not on the opposite, opposite side of the map, but just the lane next to wherever you want to push with the four guys. So you do like a 1-4 and have one lane slow pushing. Suddenly now you have so much pressure on every single lane 
that it means in two minutes time, once the minions hit the turret on whatever lane has been slow pushing, SK have to send someone back and defend it. And that's where you have your numbers advantage to take that tower or even dive onto SK. So Fnatic here needs to look at the entire map and not just where the five guys are running. Use your Z. I understand they're respecting the hard engage from a Java and Annie situation. They want to be caught out but at least have the minions then doing the work for you. Well, take a look at the boot upgrades for Rainover. On those Ninja Tabai, he's got himself distortion boots. Every single We've time. We've seen multiple flash knockups from him this game. And again, relying on individual ability of Rainover, of Thresh from Yellow Star to find the targets. To Fisher, you touched on how SK are a team that somewhat rely on individual abilities to win, those one three ones. Fnatic with their team comp, are in a fairly similar position. Yes, the roaming, yeah, yeah. the roaming is a unit, but you saw Yellow Star's hooks. He needed to land one to take a tower. And that's what we said in champs. Like it's a very different comp from Fnatic. Because normally they run with so much hard engage that if they are this far ahead, they just dive you on the turret. Just dive, blow up one or two targets, take the tower, and then they can back away and go back to base. This again. This setup, they don't have that hard engage, so they don't have the dive option. Instead, now they're spray pushing with Febri Gun. So we'll see what they can do. Fox lands a charm onto Rain over the rest of SK, poising themselves towards Baron, but not committing for it. Febivin continues the split push. Freddy, with all of that armor and hit points and his Dominus, should not be a kill threat unless of a massive misplay. Febivin is not looking to kill anything else in this tower. And that's why he's making sure the minions always get a bit of damage. Notice how Fnatic quickly split up in a 1-4 and actually had pressure now on two lanes at once, forcing SK to split up as well. The full tank with Nectar is not going to do anything to Zed. He can never kill him. So Febren is free to do whatever he wants as long as the rest of Fnatic doesn't get engaged on by Enrated and Svenska, and then Febren will win the game for you. So I do want to touch on the fact that the third dragon fell in favor of Fnatic throughout the course of the Spring Split this year, SK Gaming have actually picked up 30 Dragons in their eight games. A few of the games have gone to five Dragons as wins. On the other side, Fnatic, only 17 Dragons. Thank to move here. They should know this Baron is being started. When you have your Zed in the bottom lane with no teleport, you know SK can make a play elsewhere. They're going in. Well, let's see what can happen. Rainover tries to get in. It's not going to be enough. Svenskeren secures the Baron to reply. Now Fnatic are split up. Rainover goes down. Equalizer has already been burned, but it's SK that are retreating. Freddy teleported to the fight, but he is the sacrificial crocodile. Bibivin flashes over the wall, instantly what? charmed! Fox with a fantastic skill shot. Now they're jumping on Forgiven. He's sentenced to death by Yellow Star. Fnatic trade two for two, but they lose the Baron. They lose the Baron indeed here. The four members from Fnatic who were sitting in the mid lane, keeping SK away from that Baron, they all went back. They went back to their own base. Suddenly there was an opening. SK took it. Notice here though. Oh wait, straight on to the fight. Baron is already gone. SK has managed to pick it up, cleaning up it. At first, Fnatic actually want to disengage, but now because they notice how low SK are in that Baron pit itself, they start chasing for the kills. The charm is perfect, Fibbon goes down, but then Yellowstar, another hook. He's landed quite a lot this game already. Two for two, but Baron for SK, that would have been the perfect objective for Fnatic when you want to do this way pushing. That's gone now. So a fantastic Thresh play from Yellowstar. Throughout the course of last year, again, he was also a champion. It was a champion that he demonstrated great ability on. But this is the first time we're seeing it in 2015. It appears to be working. Unfortunately, for Fnatic, SK have evened up that Baron score. One to one this game. SK have still got Baron on three of their players. So let's see how they can use this to buy time. It's very important to note that Baron defensively might help SK close the gold lead and regain control of the jungle. You can see Forgiven taking his own red back. Yeah, at least it buys time for them to pick up some farm. Because when you have all these minions pushing down, you can't really have the Zed split pushing any longer. He needs to be there to try and help them provide some wave clear. You can see Febren walking in here. This turret will take quite a lot of damage from SK. Freddy has teleport ready. He's pushing down the second wave. So using that Baron buff correctly, splitting up in all the lanes, have these buffed up minions act as like a sixth or even maybe a seventh person for, for SK. And we'll see if it works out for them. Freddy, of course, Freddy doesn't have a Baron went down, Baron. unfortunately, in that previous fight. But Still, they can just rotate the someone out from makes. the mid lane, buff up these minions, and then you take down. Now yeah, we do like see doing here. Fnatic trying to respond. They do have decent wave clear with the Zed and Corky, but SK now have got the Baron-empowered minions. 
Fnatic a little late to the party, and SK have taken the fight. Oh, Rainover. Rainover's gone in. He's caught up. Equalizer on the back line, but it's too late. Feathervin in full retreat to steal back. He's trying to be zoned away. They've traded junglers as Fox is forced to go golden. Where is Forgiven? Keep your eyes on him. Instant flash away as Freddy trying to flash in retreat. Now Hooney goes golden himself. We do see Freddy being dropped, but SK a two for one and the tower. We're not going to be too disappointed with that one. Body blocking some of those skill shots with Tibbers as he's forced to be the sacrificial teddy bear. Nope. Fnatic, they still get the kills, but they lose the tower. Lose the tower here, but you force SK back with this Baron buff. And again, so this engage is actually very risky for Rainover, flashing in on his own. He knows he's going to die. It missed a lot of the guys from SK, but then you turn it around here. Notice how Yellowstar, he's like a kid in a candy shop saying, I want a piece of that, I want a piece of that, with his death sentence here. Gets the first count of Svenskan, Freddy's gonna be the next one. Forgiven never really feels like he can join the fight itself. Notice how Forgiven has actually saved his death mark, didn't use it the entire fight long. He was just waiting for Forgiven to overextend. No QSS yet, he couldn't, and therefore Fnatic win the fight with Yellowstar landing some more hooks. Glad you mentioned that. 35 minutes on the clock, Eye Edge, BT, Shiv. Yellowstar takes a bite out of Sven, and actually I think psychs them out with that lantern. SK decide not to engage, but as you've highlighted to Fischio, no defensive itemization for Forgiven. The only upgraded trinket on SK is on their support. And of course, the only upgraded trinket for Fnatic is on Hooney. The only reason I highlight that, in the two previous games, there were multiple trinket upgrades by the 20, 25 minute mark. Fnatic and SK still playing a slightly older style, opting not to go this route. I don't think SK realized it cost 250 gold to upgrade the <laughs> trinket. I think that's the problem, actually. There's been a lot of times where they could have gone back and picked it up. Instead, another long sword coming in from Freddy. Oh, well, the first long sword we can say. He's been full tank otherwise. That's where you just upgrade your trinket instead and get those two walls. But enough about SK. Let's talk more about Yellowstar and how many hooks he's actually landed so far. Many. Many. Many, many. We've seen them help set up fights. But look at the positioning for Fnatic. Hooney waiting on the sidelines. SK are grouped up. Yellowstar throws a death sentence. That's not one of the many. Knockup goes up from Sven onto Yellowstar. Cataclysm locks up four. Fox was looking for steel, but that is a fantastic equalizer. Forgiven Hooney down. is melting SK's HP with Forgiven out of the fight. Steelback should be able to play janitor duty. He's got one, he's got two. Hooney's got two of his own. A That's flash an from Steelback and Fnatic get themselves an ace after shutting down Forgiven. And again here, SK Gaming, they look for these team fights, but you don't have a QSS on your AD carry. Forgiven is barely able to do anything in these fights. Forbidden goes for him every single time, while the rest of Fnatic can just clean up the fights then, inhibits it down. There's still 15 seconds left on the likes of Forgiven here on and rated. Might be able to push in a little bit further. SK Gaming have got 10 seconds on their death timers and Fnatic Backing away. decide to peel Dragon away. Interestingly, I think I saw Forgiven sell his Dorans and just re-pick it up. All right, we'll touch on that a second. Here's the fight, if you show. All right, again, so look how Fnatic, they won a team fight now because there's no defensive item to really stop Febren from doing anything. Look at Forgiven here. He has to be so careful with his positioning. Rumble ulti in his face. Forbidden dives in as well. He's down, he's dead, and he's out. And now they can just clean up these fights. SK Gaming at the moment don't really have any answers. Zion Spartan is going to be grinning after that tweet he sent in earlier. Huni Insane ulti. is a god, and that equalizer was phenomenal. Interesting to see him picking up that death cap. However, it is a third item. And still no QSS on Forgiven. All of that damage is so important for SK to win team fights because they've only got two damage threats. Fox looked for steel back, could not find him he himself. So long as sitting on a Abyssal Scepter and Hourglass, down 60-odd CS. Thanks to the fact that fibbervin has been split-pushing. But look at the gold difference, look at the tower difference, and now Super Minions in the mid lane as well. Again, SK Gaming, from falling behind early on, has not been able to play the style they want to, where you get so much farm on every single carry because he has a lane on his own for like 30 minutes of the game. They haven't been able to do it because they fell behind. And that's also why the Ari pick up and I'm even going to say the Renekton pickup haven't been able to do anything because they, they have zero pressure in any lanes. And then we have these team fights. Yes, you have a strong front line, but if your AD carry is unable to get more than one or two auto attacks off because he's just going to be the target every single time. Oh! No, no, but that's a nice Collateral difference. damage comes out. SK Gaming have found Fnatic way split up. Reynov is going to get dropped as Baron spawned in the background. And Rated didn't give us a chance to react because he flashed Tibbers in an instant. <laughs> Now, SK, they're on Baron. They punish Fnatic's 
over aggressive red play. Equalizer goes out from Huni. This is another great one. The given peel away. Huni stunned up, but he takes the lantern to safety. Look at Steelback, still full HP, low on mana. Baron ticking away, it's down low. Fox forced to Hourglass. Deathmark's been used by Feverbin. Huni is down. Look for Forgiven. Where is he? We see Enrated dropped in the background. Enrated, uh, Forgiven rather, in full retreat. Steelback is playing cleanup. They've turned it around and Fnatic, they kite, they fight, they damage, and they take down SK in the Baron pits. SK Gaming were tanking their Baron the entire fight long here, and Fnatic just kept walking in and out, constantly displaying them. This is a nice engage from N Raid onto two guys from Fnatic. L lovely setup. They also saw Steelback in the bottom lane. He was trying to start a slow push there. Then he would go up and join his team around the Baron. So perfect start for SK. Onto the Baron here. They keep tanking. Notice how Fnatic, they walk in, they show themselves back away a little bit, get a bit of damage, while the Baron just keep hitting on everyone here from SK. Kiting in and out. In the very end, once the fight really breaks out, Steelback is left untouched in the fight here. Still full HP, still have the shield from the BT. Then he can just cl start cleaning up towards here as well, dying to Baron. Steelback, Deficio, you called him a little overrated last week thanks to his 2v2 strength, or weakness rather. However, did praise his team fight presence, and you're looking at a guy that was 40, 50 CS down in the laning phase, is now 10, 1, and 7. Fnatic have got an AD carry that plays the janitor exquisitely. Yeah, his positioning is great. He's playing again. The likes of Corky, where he can stay back in the start, land the rockets, and then he moves in later and start cleaning up the kills for himself. And yes, his landing phase is somewhat weak. That's why we're not going to consider him, let's say, a top two AD carry, like a lot of people have been praising him for. But he's still looking extremely good in fights, and he's getting better and better from every week we see him. So he's slowly moving towards his top ranks for Steelback. I will see if Fnatic can close this game out. Super minions in the middle lane. Baron buff empowering any other minions that they want. And Forgiven, most likely going Mercurial Scimitar, but he's going the BF Sword route. All about the damage. Yeah, again, Forgiven is in such a tough situation where you have, again, a full tank Renekton, and a full tank Javan, who's not going to offer any damage in team fights. So you have to get all the damage from your two carries, and that's why you need to go these very aggressive builds. But it's just, if you don't have that defensive item to protect you, you can't even get any auto takes off because Forbidden can just jump you every time. Stun used by Enrated to hold up Rain over. Death Sentence has connected. Yellow Star opts not to engage in this one. Look at that Baron empowered Siege Minion hammering away on the inhibitor turret. Fnatic have got a dominant lead against the 2015 most dominant European team. 12,000 gold ahead. 13 kills ahead. And now they're sieging up. They're going to get the inhibitor turret. SK, with all the hard engage in the world, they've got no flash and any. They're playing super defensive. They're not wanting to pick a fight because they're so far down on items. So far down inhibitor here. We'll take some damage. Huni pushing in the mid lane as well. So Fnatic once again spreading out a little bit. And <laughs> Yellow Star. Every single hook. Oh, that was a bit of a misplay, the but they're going in Huni. didn't connect. The box was down. huni has gone out before he can fire his equalizer. Can SK make this work? The rest of Fnatic are trying to get the inhibitor. Steelback is temporarily held in that cataclysm. It's going to time out. Fnatic lost one, but they got the objective, and they're going to turn to the mid inhibitor. That's a giant crocodile. This is Dominus times out. And Fnatic, yes, they lost one, but they've got super minions in the bottom lane. They still retain control of the map. Yeah, four dragons, remember to one. Oh, onto Freddy. Well, let's see what Freddy can do. He's forced to flash away. The rest of Fnatic staying as that hunting pack. That's a flash knockup from Reynov. He's done it before, he's done it again. Enrated, hooked by the death sentences. Fnatic now decide to retreat. Forgiven had a lot of HP, a lot of damage to put down, but no collateral to close out. So Fnatic unable to make their signature death push work that time. They're going to try again. Death sentence goes wide. And SK trying to push Fnatic away. Ten seconds before the fifth dragon, SK have to contest this. And they're moving out five guys here. Everyone is ready. Rainover can jump back with his ult in. Teleport is ready for Huni, so we're gonna see a big team fight here if Fnatic wants to go for it. 
They're staying around. Wait no. for TP's coming in now from Huni. No collateral. Back, though. No Dominus. No Cataclysm. SK are fighting without ultimates. They do to get the dragon, though. Equalizer comes out. It's going to split SK Gaming. It's further than splits Fox's head in two. Freddy gets turned into a pair of crocodile boots as Finn gets run down by Feathervin. SK in full retreat. A four-man stun from Inrated, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to get dropped in reply. They can finish it's this now. It's all on Forgiven against five members of Fnatic. Fnatic are pushing into the base. Fnatic looking to knock SK Gaming down. They want to steal back the European crown. They want to take SK's reign over the European LCS away. And they've done it. Fnatic give SK Gaming their first loss of the 2015 spring split. And they have done it in dominant fashion. Fnatic so excited, he even made the cameraman trip up. <laughs> Focused, stern looks from SK, but outplayed from Millenni Phase, forgiven, very animated, and a deserved victory for Fnatic. Fnatic's early game here was fantastic. The way they played around, the lack of vision from SK Gaming, and knowing SK will overextend in the lanes, just allowed Raynova to be basically the hero of the early game by ganking every single lane, taking full advantage of the lack of map control from SK. And as soon as they got the lead, also that Z first pick coming in, you completely eliminated the 1 3 1 from SK. Yeah. They were forced into team fights. And as we saw here, because they ran the double damage threat, they didn't get a defensive QSS. So Fibbin was actually useful on a Z in a team fight, even going into late game points. And obviously, Huni on on this uh, rumble was fantastic. Look at the smile from Daylor. Fnatic coach encouraging Steelback. Steelback Eleven, one and eight. Steelback dealt the most damage to champions yeah. from every single member of that game. Huni, he face palmed in the early game a couple of times, but he is a monster. And those equalizers in the late game. Yeah, fantastic. Game changing. I'm just Really happy to